is the Elevated Look Show, hosted by Mark Stamply. It's great to have you here Thank on the Elevated Look Show. Me. You know, our tagline is entertainment, marketing, and everything in between. And I thought it would be really good for you to be on the show because you are kind of young Hollywood. And you know, you're you're just coming in here. You're what, 20 years old? I'm 20, yeah. 20 years old. So I thought it would be kind of cool to get kind of your perspective on the industry, where things are going, and also just kind of like your background and what, what you like to do. Well, I've been acting now professionally seven years, which is absolutely okay. insane. Um, and I think I was pretty naive going into the business. I didn't have any family going into it. Um, and so I, I always wanted to do it. It was always a passion of mine. So it was, it, you know, some people, some kids start early because their parents yeah. kind of push them towards <laughs> that. No, I never did. Okay. My, my parents were always really protective and they didn't want me to have like, you know, be two years old and doing commercials. Sure. You know, they wanted to make sure that I wanted to life. do it and I loved it, okay. you know? Because actor life is intense. You know, it's mm -hmm. a lot of commitment. So I waited until I was about 13, 14 to get an agent. Um, and it, you know, the beginning of my career, I thought, oh, I'm gonna book all of these amazing things. No, I didn't. I think it took a lot of time and dedication. I think that's really um, a main goal of what I want to kind of um, come across today and what I want to say. You know, how, it, how early was it when you kind of discovered that that was the thing you wanted to do for a living? Oh my gosh, probably about three years old. Three years yes. old? So At I grew three up years old you knew you wanted yes. to be an actress? Yes, so I grew up in New York, okay. which is like, you know, musicals and Broadway. And um, I saw Chitty Chitty Bang Bang when I was like four. Mm -hmm. And I remember being so mesmerized and fascinated and then I saw Wicked mm. and I'm just seeing this and, and seeing these performers perform and, and theater is a very big different, it's a whole different ball game than Hollywood acting. Mm -hmm. um, but I knew I wanted to do it. I loved singing. I what loved was it about it? That, was there something specific about it that like drew you in? Like was it just, you know, just kind of like the, the glamour and like the the show, the performance of it all, or what what, what, it, what kind of pulled you in? Was it somebody's performance? I think it was all of the above. I, I think seeing Elphaba and, you know, t singing her, you know, solo defying gravity thing was a, a huge moment for me. I, I think seeing how how big you can make acting and how theatrical you can make it, I loved it. I was always such a drama queen. So this okay. was like the perfect job for me. Um, but no, I, I think I've always loved storylines and characters and, and kind of presenting messages to people because I know going away from watching a play or watching a movie or watching a TV show, I always felt something. I always felt maybe sad, maybe happy, mm -hmm. maybe I was like confused. I wanted people to feel something mm -hmm. and I loved that they had that power. A lot of people, you know, see the movies, they watch the Oscars, you know, as a mm -hmm. kid. They're like, yeah, I want to do that. Like, but what was it that changed from, like, just the desire to enter the industry to actually, like, what was the switcher like where you actually kind of professionally started? Well, I, I did theater as a kid just to okay. kind of get my feet wet into it and see that I really wanted to do it because acting is a very um, expensive business to be yeah. in, you know. Um, it's a big commitment. It is a big commitment. It's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears. Literal. Literally <laughs> tears. Um, but no, I think I did theater, and um, I think the pivotal point um, being 13, I had done a few plays in school. It was very minor roles. And I wanted more. I wanted more. And I, I think it was around that time, 2013, 2014, new Disney Channel shows, and, mm -hmm. and new movies coming out, and... Um, and I'm like, I really want to do this. I wanted more mm -hmm. than theater. I wanted more than an extra role. Sure. I wanted more. Mm -hmm. Not because I wanted to be the main stage or the mm -hmm. main, you know, but I wanted to do bigger. And I think at that point, it was like a, a flip switched in my head. And I didn't know how to start. Mm -hmm. So I got acting training who led me to my coach or acting training who led me to my agent. Where did you get your acting training? Um, I got it from someone who's on the Waltons, Mary McDonough. And oh, she's my first okay. acting coach. Very cool. And um, and she led me to my now agent. Have you watched the show? It's kind of an old. I did. Oh, okay. And then I told her about it. I'm like, hey, that's you. Um, but no, she was, she really guided me to, I was like 13. I was so naive. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anything. Yeah. I just knew I wanted to act. And so she kind of was a very good guide um, to, to everything. So I, I kind of owe that um, first step to her. 
Are you still involved with her? Does she still kind of guide you? She doesn't do coaching anymore, but she, she was do no, but she was um, a very good um, foot in the door. Oh, you know, okay. Yeah. But. So did she lead you to kind of like your first big gig or agent or how did that? Agent how did you and make the gig. next step? Agent and then gig. So when I got my <clears> agent, I um, was in a very small short film. Um, I think. LA still does it. I don't know about COVID now, mm -hmm. um, but a 48 hour film festival or film project. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, so I was in one of them in like 2013, 14, and I was like the Nerf gun girl, and I, <laughs> okay. you know, did my role proudly. Nerf gun um, Nerf gun girl. I didn't know either. Yeah. I just gladly took it. <laughs> Were you using I, Nerf products? Yes. So I was oh, using Nerf fun. products, um, and I was like shooting. You know, it was like a backyard scene. For, oh yeah. Um, but no, so I, I got free ice cream, so that was that role and was very nerf? much worth it. I didn't get a Nerf. Gun, they didn't though. give you a free Nerf. No, gun after that whole thing? no, I got ice cream, oh. strawberry ice cream, and well, that was like payment enough. It's kind of good too. It was, <laughs> it was, but um, but no, I think that um, taking a first step. I feel like a lot of actors or wannabe actors are like, well, where do I go? Mm -hmm. What do I do? And so I think for me, it was just getting a coach who can really guide me, no matter mm -hmm. who it is. Sure. Um, and I, I think that was, yeah, I think that was when I really flipped a switch to want to act. And, and I did small things. I mean, yeah. I didn't get the big, huge dream role. Yeah. Well, you're still very young, too. Yes. So you got a lot of time yeah. to work and grow well, in that industry. You know, I saw other people, you know, other actors. I, I think, um, what show was she on? Like the 100 or something, Danielle Campbell. And she had, like, this amazing story about, um, she was uh, scouted at um, a hairdresser. Oh, really? And a hair, hair, like she was just getting her hair cut and someone scouted her and she got um, a role like that. Hmm. And it was like, oh, didn't happen for me. See, I, I, yeah, I feel that you know? doesn't happen as much these days. I feel mm -hmm. like it used to, you know, uh, what was it, like Natalie Portman was discovered in a, like a pizza parlor. That's like crazy. 12 or 13. Like Ashton Kutcher, the same thing. Yeah, that like, that's yeah. very, because it, it's almost like you're going completely on look. Mm -hmm. Because you have no idea if they have talent or not. You're no. just like, oh, okay. This person just has something about them. And I want, you know, I'm going to give them a shot. So. But that didn't happen for me, at least. <laughs> not, um, yet. not yet. Not um, yet. But you're but already I, kind of on in the I'm on the, the industry. Especially yeah. last year to this year, I think, and which is kind of ironic because COVID was like the cursed mm -hmm. year of 2020. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that um, I really found my niche and I really found my brand, okay. um, which has to do with marketing. Okay. You know, I what what, what would you say your brand is? What is the Taylor Ross brand? I think Taylor Ross brand is really multi-marketable, girl next door. Um, you know, everything that I post or everything that every role that I take, every mm -hmm. everything I'm in is very family friendly and mm -hmm. um, real and raw. And is that like relatable. what you want to kind of stay with as well? Or do you kind of see yourself kind of developing and like, okay, I'm going to, this is kind of who I am now, but then I'm going to go, you know. I think morally that's always just been who I am. Okay. That's just like, that's just me. You know, I, I think you should pick a brand that's, that's you. Sure. You should never pick a brand that's like. That's going to be something that's not you. Exactly, because it's not going to be natural. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look bad. So sure. I, I think that was one of the best tips I've ever gotten in terms of like, I don't, I wouldn't say good tip typecasting. To get. That's a, but that, that's a good tip to get. Yeah. yeah, I know, I understand like, you know, there is a sense, you know, it, it's a double-edged sword because there is a sense that you need to stand out, you need to be different because there's like millions of other people, you know, trying yeah. to do exactly what you want to do. But at the same time, being who you are is just so vital and important that in the long run, that will pay off. Mm -hmm. And I think it is what kind of, it's a mistake a lot of young people make is they aren't trying to be themselves. They're trying to be something else. They're yeah. trying to be like, you know, like you said, Beyonce, like they, maybe they like Beyonce, they want to be Beyonce. And tr certainly there's good qualities, you know, about her work ethic and everything to strive towards. But to copy, you know, they sacrifice their own soul in copying somebody else. Because everyone, like I am a firm believer, everyone is born who they are and they all have like their own little voice in this world. Yeah. And um, while Beyonce is amazing, I can be my own type of Beyonce, mm -hmm. you know. And so I think that was really what I learned very quickly on in this business. Um, and I also th think just having a very supporting family who kind of instilled that in me. You know, especially in this business, you can very easily try to be something you're not, like you said. Mm -hmm. Because you feel like, oh, well, maybe that'll get me roles. Maybe that'll get me that job. Maybe that'll, you know, people like me more. Mm -hmm. And that, no. <laughs> yeah. No. It often fails. Um, you know, yeah. sometimes there's a little success in, in that, 
but it often fails. And you know, because like the one thing, it like the one thing you have in life is like the one thing you can give to people is your own unique experience. Because everyone is so different. That's the one thing you have. Yeah. So why wouldn't you want to highlight that and find you know your audience that is into that? Exactly. And I I think once you find your niche, you're good. You're good, you're set, and really understanding your brand and, and marketing from it. And I think especially in this year, in this climate post-COVID, um, you know, you'll, you'll always still have your agents and your managers and people who will market for you to some extent. Um, but I think what I also learned from COVID is, is really how to market myself by myself. Mm. You know, I, I remember several years ago, way before COVID, my agent had said to me, you know, like, yeah, you know, I'm pitching for you, I'm getting roles, but it's also up to you. Um, to to kind of know your image, know your brand, kind of uh, network and do your own thing. Because if you're not, and your agent's only kind of pitching you for a few things, you're not really going to get your foot in the door in a lot of places. And once my agent said that, it kind of um, flipped a switch almost like, I never knew that. I didn't yeah. know how to market myself. Sure. Um, and so I just started learning and I started, and I, um, I have a lot of people help me too. I, I think um, never go it alone. How did you, know. you start learning? Like, how did you start that process? Um, I think I just, I watched um, other people, you know, I looked up Instagrams of people, you okay. know, which is kind okay. of like a funny way to start, yeah. but I saw what worked, Okay. you know, and it wasn't just, oh, what, what did they wear? I, I saw um, how they, how they did things and, and kind of their essence and saying, oh, hmm. well, they showed their essence. I'll show mine. Hmm. And so I, I'm not going to say to copy people. Sure. Because that is, that is a <laughs> very different to see what people are doing good. Yeah. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. And kind of seeing what to post, what not to post, mm -hmm. you know, and, and uh, what to say about a certain project, what not to say about a certain project. You know, if you can talk about this, if you can't talk about that. What would you say to the person, you know, because sometimes you know, social media and marketing is like a bad word to people. Yeah. What would you say to somebody who says, um, you know, you're just doing that to show off? Uh, I think in some ways people do it to show off. Sure. But I think um, with actors, we um, are our own director, our own writer, our own producer right now in COVID times. So I think it's not a way to show off. It's, it's honestly a way to book jobs and to build your resume and to really get your foot in the door in this business. Um, so I think people who would say that maybe just are uninformed. Sure. You know, yeah. My, my my whole thing has always been like, you know, what is your motivation for doing it? Because mm -hmm. like you said, like there are people that are going to do it like, to show their amazing yes. life. And oftentimes those people, like, I've met a few of those people, uh, and their lives aren't as amazing as you'd think they would be. Yeah. So there's that. So like your motivation could either be, you know, I'm trying to get something. Mm -hmm. Or are you trying to give something? Like, are you trying to give value to people? There's a big difference, I think, and you can kind of tell. You know, nobody wants to see, uh, you know, ads running through a, an account. They don't want to be pushed to buy something. You know, if you're, if you have like some kind of like hand cream you're promoting, it's kind of like a TV show. You know, it, uh, a TV show. There's normally commercial breaks, mm -hmm. but it's not the whole thing. No. You know, there's it's a little bit in there, or it's incorporated into the show. You know, there like there's uh, you know a G, there'd often be like you know when I've worked in TV, we had like uh, sponsorships with like car companies. Mm -hmm. so the car companies would put their cars in the show, and there'd be like a fee for that, and it'd be more subtle because like okay, well there's jeeps running through our characters driving jeeps, but we're not saying like buy a jeep. It's just showing yeah. that it's cool. Yeah, um, but there's like jeep, 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 jeep <laughs> yeah. you know, and it's just like it no one that likes too. that. Nobody likes that. Um, you know, because it's it's annoying. And I they think that's why Netflix you. does so well because yeah. there aren't any ads. What would you say, you know, as a young actress, kind of coming into Hollywood now? What would you say is like one of the most exciting or some of the most exciting things, uh, you know, you're looking forward to or that you see, you know, where the industry is going? Um, honestly, at least for my personal experience. Um, I have a few um, potential job offers coming up this year and next year okay. um, with some of my um, producer and a writer friend. So I'm really excited. I've always wanted to work with So you them. think there's a lot of opportunities for, a young, lot of young, opportunities. for yeah. young actors and there actresses? There are so many. And I think, um, which I guess brings me to my point back to like marketing, mm -hmm. um, strategizing and utilizing Instagram or whatever platform you're on um, to your advantage in networking and, and really... Um, marketing yourself in a very specific way, I notice has gotten me those offers, has mm. gotten me those friendships. So you've gotten it through social media? Social media, okay. yeah. 
which is absolutely crazy. If you'd a if you'd probably told me like three years ago that I would have you know been in this position, I would have been like Instagram. What? No, yeah. I wasn't even on Instagram three yeah. years ago, um, which is crazy. But Not I wasn't. On everything. Yeah. No, I wasn't on anything. I didn't. You know, I didn't. I didn't know what I was doing. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I think I strategized after COVID. I was like, nope, we're going to do this. Okay, good for you. And well, thank you. Yeah. But like, sink or swim. You know. Yeah. And it's also a lot of work too. Like a lot of people don't understand. It's a lot of work. To really, you know, push those platforms. Like there's a lot of work involved to grow them. It's not like yeah. you're posting and then again, you're an overnight success. It no. takes a lot of time. You know, yeah. you look at a lot of the, um, you know, the original like YouTubers and Instagrammers and they started years and years ago and, and, and there's a reason they have, is there the, you know, lucky person that can make it with like the viral video. Yeah, sure, that happens, but it's just so, it's not really good advice to, g to give, like go be lucky, you know? No, you can't really, you, you can't, can't really say that to And especially to in the world, the, the world isn't, I mean, I guess sometimes luck, you know, right place, right yeah. time kind of thing, but it's mostly people who have, um, have made success, and I'm not talking money, I'm just saying success and, and built a name for themselves and whatever they did, no matter what business they're in, mm -hmm. was time and dedication and hard work. Yes. You can't go f to the top from the bottom. You have to go through the stages and through the levels. Um, but no, I, I think, you know, just utilizing and strategizing with Instagram has really given me um, the opportunities and the where I am in my career right now, which I'm forever grateful for. So what would you say then for <clears throat> somebody who is um, pursuing acting mm -hmm. and they uh, they don't know anything. Like they they're just starting out. They're like, man, Taylor's right. I got to get on social media. I got to do this. Like, what's the starting? What's like the building block to start with? The building block, I think, just post. You know, and I think that's also the same with TikTok that I've learned. I've always kind of like, oh, well, like, is this post good enough? Do I look okay? Does my hair look weird? You know, and I was just, I was so very like. Um, what's the word? Like very like self-conscious self -conscious about everything Most I did. Are. Yeah, but like being an actor and like you know the lights are on you and you can see your pores more. It's like oh, um, but no, just keep posting. Keep posting. The same with TikTok. Just keep posting your ideas. I mean, as long as they're um, relevant to you and your brand. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not going to post cat food. <laughs> not, <laughs> not even a cat. cat? I don't. So are like you I'm not. Yes. You are. Okay. I am. Did you have a bad experience? Are you allergic? Yes. Okay, first of all, I'm not allergic, <laughs> but my, a lot of my family is allergic, so I okay. can't really even be around a cat. Number two, I was attacked at six years old by a cat. Oh, really? Never forget. What kind of cat? Yes. Like an alley cat or like it a street was, cat? No, it was one of my friend's cats. Really? Yeah, and it just attacked me. Just it went you were full Hulk on just, me. And just, really? Yeah. And at six and years old, that's like, traumatizing. Yeah, like scratch you and everything? Yeah, yeah. And so I still have a scar. But, oh, um, you have a yeah, scar from yeah, oh, wow, uh -huh. That is a serious cat so attack. So I'm very anti-cat, but I'm not <laughs> okay. going to post about a cat. You yeah, know? I might yeah. post anti-cat stuff. Okay. Well, I'm a dog person, so. I'm a dog <clears> person, <throat> too. Yeah. I feel like... I'm, my little boy isn't here. He's at his grandparents today, oh. but uh, he's running around the, the yard. Like, I think as long as you just, like, for anybody out there who's like, I don't know where to begin, I don't know where to start, just post. Just keep posting relevant stuff mm -hmm. to you, of course. Um, and then Yeah, it's always kind it. of a tricky, because uh, I agree with that 100%. Mm -hmm. I think... M most of the problem is people are afraid, self-conscious. I just think you gotta find your your thing. Like you, it, you don't necessarily have to post like videos of yourself. You can mm -hmm. do audio. You can do a podcast. You can you know do video if you want. You can do pictures. You can do writing. Uh, there's other ways to kind of express yourself and post stuff. Exactly. Um, but I think a lot of times people are self-conscious, and even even in the, all those areas that they don't do it and. Just start doing it, but you know I think the the you know at least one part of the struggle is you know finding that balance of posting but also keeping the quality high enough too. Yeah, yeah. and I, I think as long as you just keep finding what works for you, you're set. Mm -hmm. You know, you just and you just have to go through those um, motions and those stages of okay, well, what works, what doesn't, um, what do people like, what do people not like. As long as you're true to yourself, you shouldn't mm -hmm. be such a people pleaser. Um, but if something's not working, if something's not being really big, then maybe can it? And you know, do it maybe a few times instead of you know all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I for example, um, with you know, I, I do a lot of uh, murals through COVID. Everything was like oh, shut really? down, so I did. It's like I was the self-proclaimed mural mural girl. You are. Yes, yeah, self-proclaimed. Yeah. 
So I have a lot of murals on my stories and a well, few wait, of my you're, posts. Wait, you're making the murals or you're no, like No, just standing in front of okay, them. Okay, okay, okay. And so, but I would find the ones that no one knew about. Oh. You know, because I didn't go to the pink wall okay. that everybody knows about. I did ones that were like meaningful. There was a Marilyn Monroe one um, on Melrose and that's mm. since painted over, but it was beautiful. They painted over it? They painted over it and I think it's, um, oh, what was it? I think it was Kofi or something. It was beautiful, mm. but they painted over it. It's too bad. Um, and so, but I find the ones that like nobody knows about. So I go all over. And so I did that. So you just take a day and you're just like, take a day and do it. Yeah. Crazy, right? For, for murals. <laughs> yeah. Is this just, just a like day you off. on your own, your friends, like y friends, family, whoever. Really? Yeah. They all know you're like really into murals and yes. they're supporting I loved you it because it was, it was different. You know, yeah. through, I think 2020 taught me, especially in acting, how to be creative, mm -hmm. how to still market myself when I wasn't getting auditions, yeah. when I wasn't booking roles because creating. everything was gone. Yeah. And so I'm like, well, mural. And so I found some and, and I did I did photos and they were pretty big. And now they're kind of like dying down because you know I've done them. So I'm like, okay, I do them a few times because I love it. So I'm gonna okay. post what I wanna post. I'm gonna do it because I like it. You're with BBA Talent? I am. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me, um, just cause I think a lot of people are interested in looking for an agency mm -hmm. or a talent manager how did that, how did you end up at BBA Talent? So I, um, I was uh, with my coach, Mary, and, um, and I think at that point I was there about six months and I was getting like training constantly every week and, and making sure that I really honed it before I auditioned, you know, to get representation. Um, because that is a whole different ball game. It's like, hi, I'm 13, I want representation, please don't hurt me. Um, but no, so I, I just, I got the training and then, you know, everyone, knows people, mm -hmm. everyone networks, you know, coaches, photographers, agents, they all kind of know each other um, through one avenue or another. And um, and so I, I reached out to another agency and I forgot their name. They never called me back. They didn't even call you back? Ever. No. No, when you say you reached out to them, like what, what are you doing? Are you I emailing, called them. calling, like so showing up now, at their door, knocking? No, I wouldn't suggest that now, especially or like going up to their door because mm -hmm. one, that's very solicitory and it's like they don't like that. And but then, at the same time, you could also say that it's out of the blue. I mean, it, you, could. you know, it's a fine line. It's a yeah. risky venture. It's, it's risky. a risky venture to do That's that. a risk I'm not willing to take. And I think, you know, in acting, take risks. Just don't take that one because they like their own space. Yeah. Especially casting directors. I know. I can't really vouch for, because, you know, especially even me as like producing things, I don't like when people, I hear, you know, somebody, you got to check out the script and happens all the time it's like, and it, it, it can get like especially you know just people coming up to you out of the blue is, is a little much yes but at the same time there is a sense of like persistence and like going out on the limb uh, the way I reached out to my now agent um, was I called them okay um, now it might be email um, I would suggest either Avenue email phone call I think phone um, call sounds Phone call is good because it's, it's... They could hear my voice. It, they could hear my personality. Yeah, exactly. An email, you can go over 300 times. Mm -hmm. And I've been there where I'm like, does this sound good? Do I sound crazy? And, you know, I would constantly go over and email. Is it less likely to get put in the spam folder or just yeah. get... It, it missed, might. I mean, know? maybe not even spam, but they yeah. get so many emails. Exactly. You know, and, and from, you know, top, like their clients, their top <clears> clients, <throat> and then they get the emails. They're like, oh, who's this? So, mm -hmm. bye. Exactly. But if you get a phone call... You can hear it um, as long as it's not too long. I mean, don't leave an incredibly long voicemail. Mm -hmm. um, but as long as you're like, hi, you know, my name is blank. Um, you know, this is the acting studio I go to. Um, I was recommended to go out to you. I want representation, you know, and that's really how to get your foot in the door. Is there a certain kind of um, certain steps? Like, do you, do you need that kind of like, not famous coach, but like well, you know, prestigious coach a well-regarded coach in the industry before you go to get an agent? Do you need any material? Do you need to have mm -hmm. be like, hey, I was in this, I was in that? Like, I think uh, you don't need a prestigious coach at all. You don't need to go to a, a top-rated place. And I know a lot of people are out of, um, out of state talent, so they might not have the resources that LA or New York has. You know, they could be in, you know, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, they don't yeah. really have acting coaches. Well, they do, but they don't have yeah. you know, the same level out here. Um, but I think as long as, as you just, you, you could have no acting training whatsoever, um, but you could put down, you could especially write a resume. So if you're going to talk with an agent, write your resume. And you're like, oh, well, I didn't do anything. Well, did you do a school play? Did you, um, did you do a, a shoot for someone? Um, you know, whatever, maybe even just put your special skills down. 
Maybe you never acted before. Well, special skills, well, I have a license. Um, I can speak German, kind of thing. Well, that's not me, but I'm oh. saying like, <laughs> they could speak German. They have, you know, they ride a motorcycle. They, you know, can do five hula hoops at once. That's me. Mm. Um, yes, oh, that is you. I can. Oh, that's I can one. do five hula hoops oh, at once, okay. yeah. It's a, it's a thing. Because you see all these, uh, as somebody who uh, has gotten tons and tons of, you know, casting uh, resumes, headshots, and things, and you see all these different skills, and yeah. you're like, oh, I don't you're know. Like, oh, like don't pro tennis this, star, I'm not seeing right, it. Everyone's no. writing just as much as you can. Yeah. I Any don't suggest of, lying though. Yeah, because some people are like, oh, well, like, especially back in the day, I would say like even the 80s and 90s, people were like, oh, well, you know, I did this and it got me in the door. No, don't do that. Because Mila Kunis, I think she lied about her age to get mm. onto that 70s show. She's amazing. Yeah. Maybe don't lie about your age. <laughs> Maybe don't lie. <laughs> especially nowadays. I mean, ultimately, I don't know. I mean, yeah, I wouldn't say a lot. I would think it would be worse like when you put down a skill that you don't have. Like yeah. I had a friend... Um, who was on a set and uh, it was like a, a basketball commercial mm -hmm. and one of the persons put that they played basketball and, and he didn't. they couldn't play basketball. Oh, no. So it was, I don't know if they fired him that day or not. but or It's like me saying I play basketball. I'm 5'1". <laughs> like I can barely yeah. shoot it. Well, no, but you, but if you, but then you'd kind of believe it. Like, oh, okay, that'd be cool. Have, have a 5'1 girl like playing hoops, show the other girls they can do it yeah. too. Like, you know, that... I'm like the least yeah. athletically inclined person that I know no. or that probably has ever existed. I promise you no. that. So I would never say that I do basketball, but I do other you things. You didn't do dance or anything like that? I didn't do dance. I did gymnastics. Oh, oh but well, never gymnastics did dance. is super no. And, you know, I, I put down that I sing uh, okay. and then my vocal range mm -hmm. and um, and what kind of music I mostly sing. So okay. I think as long, even if you never have book, booked work or you've never been in a play, you've never done mm -hmm. anything, write down your special skills. Okay. Because then the agent, whoever you go to, or manager, if that's the route you want to take, um, they can say, okay, well, maybe this would be a good thing. You know, I could see her for that. I could see him yeah. for that. Um, but no, I think in as long as you just like put down you, you don't have you don't yeah. you don't feel like you have to have all your ducks in a row because you're never going to have all your ducks in a row. Even if mm -hmm. you have all your ducks in a row, you're never going to have it. Mm -hmm. No, as long as you just market yourself and say, this is me, here I am. You might not get it. You might not get the agent, but yeah. it's it's. But at it's least it'll be option. legitimate when you yeah. do. It's an opportunity to act and an opportunity to interview. Okay. You know? Um, that was really good. I like that. Very good points. Thank uh, you. What would you say then, you know, um, as, a young actress or, or even just for young actors in general, mm -hmm. like what are some of the challenges today in that world and, and maybe even more specifically, like what do you feel like your greatest challenges right now in that industry? That's a good question. Um, I would say right now, um, a challenge that was a little hard in 2020 and I think is now changing for the better because I want to leave it on a positive note, um, I think was just booking work. Because I think a lot of people after COVID, they didn't want to work with um, a lot of new people. They kind of want to be like, okay, well, we have our own set of people mm -hmm. and our own thing. And, you know, social distancing and everything. That really, you know, cut a lot of people mm -hmm. out. You know, they're like, oh, well, I want to work, only want to work with this person because I know that, you know, they did X, Y, Z, whatever. Um, so I think that was a, a struggle that I kind of had a little bit, trying to get my foot in the door in a lot of places because no one wanted to... Um, interview, even on Zoom, I, I found it a little hard, but I think um, now it's kind of working for the better. I would just say when you get into character, I think one of the biggest things, is gonna be tea time with Taylor. Uh, one of the biggest things that I have learned as an actor is finding a clear objective in what you're doing and what your role is. Because mm. if you're if you're auditioning and you you know you finally got that agent, woo, you know that's down. I got my coach, great. Let's do this. Let's book this Panda Express commercial, right? And you go in there, you say your lines, and you have like one line. I liked that wonton. You know what is your objective? You know you can have yeah. one line and make it so authentic and real. And I think that's something that I have struggled with And it sometimes. can be really important to yeah. whatever you're doing, it, that whether it's a commercial, like that is the line that like keys in exactly. you know, the point, or it's a, you know, something in the movie or TV show that, you know, it, it, there's, it it's there for out. a reason. Yeah, every th no, there is no small part and there's no small line. There are only small actors, and that is something I will stand behind. So you will go in there and say your wonton line, but make it count. You know, okay. and, and I think also something I also learned um, besides just finding a clear objective for whatever you're doing mm -hmm. um, or for your character, 
um, is also going in there and knowing that I might not get this role, but they, the casting director or whoever you're auditioning for, maybe if it's a you know student film, they can see me for other things. Hmm. You know, and I, I think that um, I've auditioned for things in the past. Um, I'll use one example. I auditioned for an, ep an upcoming a Netflix series, right? Hmm. And so I auditioned, and um, and he you know liked it, and it was a great part, um, but it just didn't fit. And so How now, come? I. I was like a little older for it. It was like a younger role. Oh, okay. And you know, I'm I'm 20. You play young. You, you still. It was like 16. I don't even say you look. Okay. It was 16, 17, and and you I look a little more on. college, you know, because I am. Okay. Um, but it, it just didn't work out. Um, but I was like, okay, well. And then I was just talking with him a few weeks ago, and he sends me a script, and he's like, hey, you know, maybe later on in the season, mm. I have this specific episode. Do you want to audition for it? Oh, I'm I'm cool. considering you for this strongly. Very cool. I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. Um, and Exciting. so let's let's hope. It's not for sure. Yeah. I don't want to say, oh, I have a part. I don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but it, sure. it's it's quite it's quite cool. It's a good um, to be get plugged in with Netflix. Is, is a, it's really is a cool. Very um, good career path move. No, I, I think um, a lot of people just, and at least for me, mm -hmm. because I did have that Panda Express job, right? And I'm walking in. That was my first audition. Oh. And I was like, I'm gonna get this. I didn't. I didn't even uh. get a call back. I was ho I was like so sad. I was mm. like, this business hates me. It did. After it your doesn't. first one. After my first you one, I'm like, Mom, I quit. <laughs> you know, just being so melodramatic. What as would I you am. say, like, because that, that's probably a very common thing that a lot of, especially younger, yeah. you know, actors are dealing with. Like, w is there any advice you'd give to people like dealing with like the hard like kind of rejection and starting out? Is there anything? I think, well, first of all, I'd say, honey, you got this. You're good. Stop crying. You're fine. Here's a tissue. Second of all, I'd say um, all of every no is going to lead you to one yes. And I think for, for me, I do have to be a little negative. You're going to have mm -hmm. more rejection than you are going to get success, for the most part, statistically speaking. Um, but I, I would say that um, as long as you stick with it, but you know you want to stick with it, mm -hmm. You got it good. You're going to get that job. You're going to book something. You don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. It's sometimes right place, right time. And, and um, I mean, I auditioned, you know, for really big movies. Um, and I wasn't ready. And I bombed the auditions. Mm. And I was, like, so upset at myself, but I wasn't ready. And it wasn't the right timing. And it wasn't the right job. It wasn't the right role. Mm -hmm. And I've booked other work where it was even better and bigger because I was ready emotionally ready to handle a role. And maybe those times where you did fail, those mm -hmm. actually helped build you too. They did. So you could succeed in, the, in, those, in those roles. And now I have funny stories. <laughs> <laughs> and now That's I have funny good. stories. And um, at the time I was crying, but now I kind of laugh it off. Yeah. Um, That's good. But yeah, Seems no. Like you're, I mean, you've always, stick with from it. what I've noticed, like you've always had a very positive attitude on things, a good outlook on things. Well, thank so you, I, I try. I like, that. I like that like good spirit. I try. I think, you know, especially after this past year, um, and especially for the acting community, it, it got hit. You mm -hmm. know, I'm not I'm not going to try to be like, oh, violin, playing. No, a yeah. lot of other people were much more affected than mm -hmm. the acting community, I would say. Um, but a lot of people lost their jobs. A mm -hmm. lot of people lost their passion for it and their drive. A lot of people um, got out completely. Yeah. It because they thought, oh, well, I can't make money. Some people mm -hmm. look at acting and go, well, I love it, but it also makes me money. Yeah. I have, you know, this is my job. I think and, it just um, comes down to how much you want it. Because yeah. if it's something that you, if it's that dream you really want, you're going to go after it. You're never going to Whether money is involved or not. But if it's, you know, it's something you kind of, you're kind of there, you're half in, half out. You know, these no. kind of situations are going to... You cannot be one foot in, one foot out with acting. You just can't. Mm -hmm. Because I live and breathe it every single week. I have a monologue in my hand. I go over it. Um, I will, you know, be in class. Especially at my college right now, I am taking an acting class on okay. top of a theater class. Oh, wow. So every single week I have a monologue. And you guys, are, you guys' classes are winding down. I'm guessing finals are. Yes. So June, up. It's like almost May. Mid June I end, and I'm so excited to have this summer to devote to. Yeah. What are you gonna do this summer? Potentially getting a play. Oh. I audition next week, so I'm really okay. excited for one of the supporting roles. Okay. Is the, what, the main. what? Can you say the name of the play? I can't say the name of it. Where would the play be? Um, touring locally, worldwide, nationally. It'd be through my school. Through the school. Um, okay. And so that I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna do it when I actually, if I get it, because I don't yeah. want to embarrass myself. Um, can you imagine? It's like <laughs> I see this later and like, didn't I didn't get it, it. I and I'm like, I don't want to promote it unless I really got it, um, because I learned that the hard way. Sure. Yeah. Um, you can't but do that. no, I, I think um, 
if I do get that, that's my summer this year um, because I am a theater major okay. and I wanna, I want to devote my time to it. You know, so if I do get that, that's my summer until almost September, and I'd be shoot, doing eight days in a row. And you seem like really excited about that. I'm like, so excited. You know, like a lot of people would be like, summer, yeah, I'm going to go to the beach, I'm going to do this, yeah. see my friends, travel, I which is good. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that. But I did that. I kind of like, I kind of like the, <laughs> you're 20. Yeah. That maybe? No, I uh, did. No, know, but like, I, I like school. that you have uh, the mentality that, you know, um, it's kind of like, the, you know, I think what a lot of, maybe not as much these days, but I, I mean, even still these days, like people, like the whole working for the weekend kind of mentality mm -hmm. where... You know, it's kind of like a grind to get through the week, to yeah. get to the weekend. And, I mean, my mentality has com changed completely. Like, I feel like I'm working every day. I'm doing something. I'm like, I like that, but I like it. Like, it's it's it. The process is my passion. Exactly. And I think if you have that mentality, it's like, yeah, like people be like, oh man, your your whole summer shot or whatever. <laughs> but like, no. no. But like, you like you love it. Like, it's gonna be fun. This is you're gonna all grow. I've ever asked you're gonna for. do all create all the stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, fingers crossed. Thank you. Um, cross your fingers on your toes. Um, but uh, this is all I've ever wanted, and all I've, um, I'm so grateful for it. And I think um, since last year, I didn't have that opportunity. I don't think a lot of people had that opportunity. Mm -hmm. Now I'm just taking it. Now yeah. I'm just like, I'm going to, you know, I've been so deprived, work deprived of yeah. everything. And so now I'm, now that I'm booking and, and putting, you know, being put on a veil and being considered for roles, and I'm taking the opportunities. Because, you know, I, I feel like opportunities, they come and go. But the specific one is, that's that's it. You right. know, the very specific opportunity. Um, so I, I take the opportunities that come. You don't yeah. want to look back and regret. Like, that's the no. main thing. It's like, no. even even if you, you know, I was saying this last, last episode, is even if you end up failing everything. <laughs> like, yeah. it, even if you did that, better to be in that position than to look back and be like, man, I wonder what would have happened. If I had tried out don't for that live role, in regret. Done that. Yeah, don't live in regret. That that's worse. I, mm -hmm. I you know at least the failure you found you found out you got an answer mm -hmm. to not have the answer. That's the thing that scares me more. Yeah. Not to get the answer. Like I'd rather get the answer if it's I'd yes, no, wait, whatever it is. I'd rather have <laughs> like that a magic answer. eight ball. Yeah. <laughs> no, but like take the opportunities that come your way because life's too short to to wait and to guess and to live in regret. And so I think that's what I'm doing now. Is my summer going to be ruined? I don't know. <laughs> but at least I can act. And we're actually going to be doing on stage. Yeah. Um, limited audience, though, obviously. Yeah. Um, social distance. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to be back in the... In, in on stage, yeah. it's just there's nothing the like audience it. audience and everything you back, know, too. And, you know, funny story. I actually, after my last play, um, well, I just got a play. But before that was 10 years since I had done a play. Oh, right? wow. So it was a, a whole decade. Was there a like, reason for that? Honestly, I just wanted to focus mainly on um, like Hollywood acting rather Camera. than theater. You know, because I always, I always hated doing live. You yeah. know, I was very nervous always. And I'm like, oh my God, I forgot my line. Uh, um, but I, I just, I didn't like live. Hmm. And so um, now I'm doing live, you know, technically. Yeah. Um, but I, I honestly, last year, I was like, well, I'm a theater major. I kind of have to do theater. So suck it up, Taylor. <laughs> um, and just the right, you know, the right role came into my lap. And I rediscovered my love for theater. Yeah. I loved watching it. I loved being sure, an yeah. audience member. Um, but I was like, oh, is this for me? I think so. Hmm. You know, am I going to end up on Broadway? I don't know. Hopefully. Yeah, you um, get there. But you can do it. I, I don't know. It's just I, I had this passion, this love for yeah. it. You can't do it if you don't have a passion yeah, for it. Yeah, absolutely. Because honestly, I think theater is more demanding than Hollywood acting. I can see that. In a way. Yeah. Because you're doing eight shows mm -hmm. in a week. It's like exa um, It's like physically exhausting. Physically exhausting. And you have pretty much no break except intermission mm -hmm. for a good two hours. Yeah. And, uh, and a brief intermission at that. Um, so you have to love it. Mm -hmm. And I love it. Well, that's good then. And um, and I so I've been doing a lot of like comedic kind of theater. I haven't you know done any Les Mis or anything, um, but I don't know. I just I've rekindled my love for it. Very cool. Well, you'll have to tell me once you can. What, I will. What that whole thing. If I get it, I'll if let you know. If you get know. it, you can. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Don't, if don't I jinx don't, it now. Don't jinx <laughs> yeah. it now. But if you get it, yeah, you'll have to have to let me know. I will. Um, yeah, the last question I'd ask you um, would just be. I mean, I'm, you're you're young anyway, but like, what would Taylor of today, what advice would she give Taylor of when she was just starting out? Oh, like I 13? love that. Don't worry too much. 
I worried so much. I was very much overacting. So think of like Disney on mm. steroids because I thought I had to like make, you know, a big, my big debut, my big entrance. And I'd say, don't worry so much. Don't overact because the camera will pick that up. Um, and don't, yeah, just don't worry so much because I did. I, I think um, I really got to that point in 2018. Um, another story time with Taylor. Um, where I think that was really the pivotal moment, the climactic moment of wanting to act. Mm -hmm. um, or, or staying in acting. Yeah. And I'd gotten so much rejection and, um, and I, I was honestly just so done with it. I wanted to book something. Yeah. Um, and I wasn't. And that was really sad as like a 17 year old and a 16 year old. And, um, and I remember I was like, I was so catatonic in the, in the um, waiting room. I'll never forget, it was for a small short film. And I was so nervous, I almost like threw up. And I was just sitting there <laughs> like, did they call my name yet? Um, and, and no, but I, I bumped into um, an actor who was auditioning in the same building. And I'll never forget, he gave me a pep talk and he's like, well, why do you, do you love what you do? I'm like, yes, as I'm sipping my Coke <laughs> and nauseous. And he's like, stay in it. You know, you don't want to look back mm -hmm. and regret. And if that guy is an angel. Um, yeah. And, and that was really the pivotal moment. And, and I remember my, um, my mom had taken me and she's like, do you want to do this? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> she's like, well, you can't be almost puking every time you go on, mm -hmm. you know? And I, I think at that point, that's what I would tell my younger self. Don't worry so much. That's great you know? advice in and general. Then, yeah. And then the next day I went on to um, audition for um, a pilot, NBC, a pilot. Um, I don't think it ended up getting picked up, but I got a call back. It didn't book it, obviously. Um, but moral of the story is that you're always going to have something that scares you, but do it scared, yeah. you know? Because I think don't, don't worry is such a, a vague term. Mm -hmm. I think I'm gonna change that to do it scared. Hmm. Do it scared. Li live in that moment, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. courageous. Yeah, I like it. I like that a lot. Yeah. That's very good. That's what I tell my younger self. Mm -hmm. And also the hair, no, please, no. It was way too long. I'm like, get it cut. And don't mm -hmm. curl it that way. It looked awful. I burned I all the pictures, I the picture. so I have no, oh, okay. no one has proof of, no, I burned evidence. <clears throat> no one will ever have those pictures of me. <laughs> I burned it. Very good. Well, hey, thank you uh, for being on the show. Thank um, you so much for I having me. you provided a lot of value and insight I to the upcoming young Hollywood um, that is kind of just starting out. It's a whole new kind of world to enter into. So um, I'm excited to see where things, where things go and be a part of this whole thing too. So, um, so yeah, thank you. Thank uh, you. Thanks for watching. There's lots more content coming your way. So make sure to subscribe to get the latest episodes delivered directly to you.